Hi, I'm Andy Glass with WorkshopAddict.com. Getting perfect 90 degree miters is very difficult, so today we're going to build this ultimate miter sled or picture frame jig, sometimes referred to as. And the, what makes this jig special is there's a fence here that's at 90 degrees and roughly aligned up to this blade. Now the beauty of this jig is you make your first cut on the left hand side of the fence and then you make your second cut cutting the piece to length on the right hand side of the fence. Now if this joint is off from 90 degrees or it's not perfectly lined up to the blade at 22 and a half, it doesn't matter because these two joints equal 90 degrees giving you a perfect 90 degree miter. Now it also has a few other features including two auto adjust clamps to keep your material in place, a nice sturdy handle to keep your fingers away from that blade, and then a berry block that the blade buries into keeping it from hitting uh, clamps or your fingers. There's also a T-track on the right hand side for an adjustable stop, and then I made a quick uh, stop extension in case you want to make very large uh, pieces that need to be at 45 degrees. Let's go ahead and get started. Stick around. Hope you enjoy. I start by taking a sheet of half inch MDF and ripping it to size on the table saw. I made this miter sled on the smaller side as I don't do too much large miter work. Make your jig however large or small you would like. Next we need to measure the miter slots on our table saw to get the right fit. I rip some straight grain hardwood for the runners to rough size at the table saw. There are two ways to get them to a perfect fit. You can bump your fence a few times while trying it in the slot after each test cut, or you can send them through the drum sander using your calipers to get them the exact width you need. You want a smooth fit with zero play in them. You can also purchase commercial options for the miter slot bars. Make sure the thickness is less than the depth of your slot to minimize friction. We can then use some washers or nuts to elevate the runners so we can attach them to our MDF. I elevate the runners in the slot and apply 2P10 CA glue from FastCap and then using my table saw fence to register the board square, I pivot it down making contact with the runners. I then place some weight on the sled till the CA glue cures. I didn't use any activator here. I had the runners long so I quickly trimmed them up with a handsaw. I then pre-drill and countersink for some screws to permanently hold the runners to the sled. I apply some paste finished wax to the runners to make the sled nice and smooth. I raise the blade through the sled and make a small cut to register the fence on. It is vital your fence be 90 degrees square. I use a large square to check and mark a perfect 90 degrees corner and then use my track saw to cut a triangle section. Butting the table saw fence up against the sled, I use a drafting triangle to get the fence at the right angle and perfectly on the saw curve. I then use some pin nails to keep it in place while I pre-drill and drive some screws to keep it in position. It is important that this fence never move or the jig will be ruined. I trim off the corners of the jig to make it lighter and easier to maneuver. A couple dabs of CA glue to temporarily hold the T-Track in place and then I can come back and using a self-centered drill bit, drill a pilot hole for the mounting screws. I glue together some scrap half inch MDF to make the handle. When it dries, I square it up with a table saw and bring it to the miter saw to cut it to length. I then angle the saw to 45 degrees to cut off the corners to make it feel more natural when holding it. I then head to the router table to give it a large round over to ease the edges and make it more comfortable. I mount it to the sled using CA glue and two large screws. It is important to pre-drill or you will split the handle. I glue a couple pieces of MDF together for the berry block. This is where the blade will bury to protect your hands and other features of the sled. I add a few more sections of T-Track for the auto adjust clamps.
Off camera I made a stop block that fits in the T-Track itself and then I made a stop block extension that rides in the T-Track and locks in place with a few star knobs. It has a rib that registers it against the T-Track keeping it perfectly aligned. The stop block gets put in one of the holes and you can slide the extension to get the right length you need. With the miter sled complete and all the features attached, let's give it a test. Insert your board on the left hand side and clamp it down and push it through the saw. Remove the board from the left hand side and register it up against the stop block on the right hand side, clamp it down and make your cut. Here you can see in this sped up video how easy it is to quickly and accurately make four miter joints that are perfectly 90 degrees and all the same length. Remember you need to match up the left joint and the right joint. You should mark the face of the board and the joints in case you drop your material. Well, what'd you guys think? I think the perfect 90 degree miters speak for themselves. This jig was an absolute success. Miter joints are not something that's hard to do. They're just tedious to set up. And having a permanent solution in the shop to simply grab, slap it on the table saw, and get, start, get cutting and get perfect, accurate, repeatable results every single time is something that's gonna be very welcome in my shop. I love how the jig turned out with the auto adjust clamps, the safety features, and then the stop block system. Uh, stop blocks are a must have in scenarios like this because it doesn't matter how accurate your miter joints are, if your matching parts are not the same identical length, your joints will not be perfectly 90 degrees. You will have gaps in them. So that is something that uh, something like this jig is a must have feature. Let me know below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback on what do you like, what don't you like, what would you add, what would you change, etc. I'd love to provide feedback below uh, on my thoughts as well. I encourage you to follow us on social media as we do project updates just like this one product review updates, as well as exclusive social media giveaways. I'm Andy Glass with Workshop Attic. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time.